here tonight. He's been a tremendous help. He's been a tremendous help to me in these times uh, of, of uh, I guess you should say, weakness uh, on, on my family's part. But, you know, it's very humbling to, to have to have to have somebody else step in. But at least I know that, you know, you guys were in good hands. Amen. And so there's some other men and women in here that, I, that I'm going to be looking at shortly, praise God, to join the ranks. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's another topic for another time. Um, but I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for his family. I'm waiting to see that beautiful baby is his. And, and we're all waiting to see it. God is blessing him and increasing him. Come on, let's invite him to the pulpit as he preaches the word of God. In Jesus name. Well, praise God, everybody. Amen, amen. Um, I, I, I think... I think you guys were right. Um, I think I'm starting to get soft already. <laughs> Praise God. She'll do it to you. I'm telling you. Broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Super excited to be in the house of the Lord. Um, you know, what a presence of God that we feel in this house. Super excited. Um, super excited to have pastor back in the house. Amen, amen, amen. And um, I really thought Pastor was just going to go ahead and preach. He could have. All I had to do was just hand him the iPad. He was already in, in the vein. So, you know, I, I'm trying my best not to be before us too long because time has already escaped us. If we can turn very quickly to the word of the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 18. We're going to start in verse 1. Um, Probably do more um, teaching. I know I say that a lot than preaching, but praise God. We only let God have his way. Jeremiah chapter 18. We're going to start in verse 1. Um, if you have it, please say amen. 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 If you don't have it, it is on the monitors. Praise God. And the word of the Lord reads, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of, of clay was marred in, his ha in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the hands is in the potter's hands, so are ye in mine hands, O house of Israel. Tonight I want to talk to us from a topic of staying at the potter's house. Pastor, if you'll please pray for us in Jesus' name. Come on, saints, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for your mercy, O oh God, and your kindness toward us, Lord. We pray right now, Lord Minister Thompson, Lord God, that you would anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord, now, O oh God. We pray right now, Lord God, that this atmosphere would be conducive for your word to be planted in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We pray that you move miraculously in this place, Lord. Let every spirit that is not like you be cast down, Lord God, and forbidden to operate, Lord. We pray right now that your will would be done in this place, Lord. We surrender this service over to you, O oh God, praying that you Give the glory, O oh God, all of the honor, Lord, and all of the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen to the Lord. Amen, amen. amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. As you're seated, um, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad to see you. Praise God. Stay at the potter's house. Amen. Amen. Pastor was just talking about, one, filling the house, and two, he don't understand how people can not come to church. Praise God. And we're going to talk about that tonight, staying at, at the potter's house. We have to be careful that we don't ever abandon the potter's house. We have to be careful that we don't abandon the potter's house. We are living in the last days. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Lord is soon to come. And if you know the Lord is soon to come, then we need to be careful that we're going to be where the Lord is coming to. Because <laughs> the Lord is coming back for his church. Well, if he's coming back for his church, I want to be in this church. 
So we need more church today more than ever before. See, in our society, people are desperate for something different. Um, I was talking to a gentleman, um, might have been yesterday. Today's Monday. Yeah, yesterday. I talked to a gentleman yesterday, um, and he was talking about how um, different things has changed over the years. And, um, and I told him a lot of that equates to parenting. You know, um, and he was talking about, well, no, not really. You know, it's really our generation is more spiritually awakened now than ever before. I was like, I don't think we're more spiritually awakened. I think we're more in a spiritual coma than ever before. I said, because you can't be spiritually awake if you're separating yourself from the presence of God and the house of God. And. He thought about it for a minute, and I explained to him that you can see the effects on our society as parents have not been encouraging or enforcing their children to frequent the house of God. Gang violence, all-time high. Suicide rate in teenagers, all-time high. Drug addiction in adolescents, teenagers, little kids, all-time high. You have little kids, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, addicted to crack cocaine. Never been heard of before. But we're, we're spiritually awakened. I'm trying to figure out how can you be spiritually awakened and you don't have life in you. So we have to be careful because as much as, as they're in a spiritual stupor, they're still desperate for something. And they're seeking after something that is different from what they've been told over the years because they have come to the realization that what they've been told over the years hasn't panned out yet. This is the reason why people don't get so excited when we say, oh, man, the Lord's coming back. Oh, man, I've heard that before. Well, it's easy to say that and get tired of that message if you don't know the Lord. Now, when, when, when I was young and I knew my dad was coming home, I would be excited, and I'm sitting by the couch or by the window or wherever, and I'm waiting on Daddy to come because I know he's coming home. I don't care how old that message can be, I'm waiting on Dad. Why? Because I love him. My kids, even when they get in trouble, my wife calls me sometimes, and, and, and they're not going to sleep. They're not laying down. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. She'll call me, put me on speakerphone. Talk to the children. They won't go lay down. Children, I'm on the way home. And they'll go run, and they'll lay down, and if they're super tired, they'll fall asleep. If they're not tired, they'll kick their legs to try to stay awake because they want to see daddy when he comes home. Nowadays, our society, oh, that's an age-old message. We've been hearing Jesus coming back for all these years. Our daddy used to talk about it. There's no anticipation. There's no anticipation for the king because there's no relationship with the king. But people are desperate for something different. That's the reason why you'll see everybody that's a part of something. To the point where I don't really know what to believe in, so we'll just coexist. I'm just going to believe in everything. People are desperate for a change. People are desperate for an experience. It's the reason why you'll notice that some people will pop up on YouTube and they'll ha have a YouTube channel and you can have the dumbest thing on YouTube but you can become what's called an influencer. Because somebody wants to be a part of something. Desperate to belong and attach to something and to someone. I need somebody. I want somebody. I long for somebody to lead me. As much as we raise in a society full of rebels... These rebels want to be led by somebody. And we can put up this front and we can, we can, we can believe the lie if we want to. Oh, man, they don't want to follow nobody. No, everybody in this world, there's a natural thing that's on the inside of you that is willing and longing to submit to authority. No matter how carnal you are, there's still something inside of you that longs for that voice of a father. On an experience. You notice now that not only do you have influence on, on YouTuber or on YouTube, 
But you also have these televangelists popping up everywhere. And you already know my stance on it. I don't have to keep reiterating it. But you got these Facebook evangelists that, 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 that's doing this and doing that. And I get it. Spread the gospel by any means. But who's praying for these people when they're broken? Oh, I get it. We're baptized in Jesus' name. We're praying them through to the Holy Ghost. I got it. You pray them through, then you leave them. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And now people are like, wait a minute, you're just like everybody else. Who is shepherding these, these sheep that you're, that you're now cultivating? When they're sick in the hospital and, and you're a thousand miles away, who's visiting them? Who's ministering to them and teaching them a Bible study? Because Jesus didn't just say go out and baptize everybody. He said go make disciples. Who's discipling them? But we got thousands and thousands and thousands of Facebook followers. And we're an evangelist. And we're evangelizing. But yet we're causing so much friction in the body of Christ. To the point now people rather watch YouTube and Facebook preachers that come to the house of God. Three points for your consideration today. Because we got too many families that's dying and broken. Too many families that's on the brink of divorce. Too many families longing for a shepherd. Firstly, there are lessons you will only learn in the potter's house. You won't get it here. You won't get it on, on, on social media. You won't get it on YouTube. You won't get it on the corner. You won't get it on, on Instagram. There are some lessons that God will only tell you in the potter's house. The reason why this is so important is because this desperately defies the logic and reason that says I can have church on my own. I can have church by myself. I got a relationship with God and that's good enough. I know God for myself. Pay attention to our opening text in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. The word, the word which came to Jeremiah from who? The Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. I'm not telling you nothing else. Go to my house, and I got something I'm going to tell you there. See, prayer will get you so far. Prayer will get you to a point. But if you want direction, you got to come to the house. He says, I caused thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So made, so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. The word didn't come on YouTube. The word didn't come on Facebook. So don't tell me you can make it in this Christian walk without the house of God. We can know God for ourselves without coming to the house of God. It's foolishness. That's the biggest lie that the devil is breeding into our generation. Oh, well, God has made it convenient for us and gave us technology. He didn't give you technology for you to sit at home. He gave you technology to reach the world that hasn't had a chance to hear it. We can't abandon the house of God. If we leave the house of God abandoned and neglected, how when visitors come are we going to pray them through through the live stream? If nobody ever comes to the house of God and we just have church on our own, who's going to open up the doors for them when they come? Pastor can't sing all the songs and play all the instruments and preach the word and pray for everybody and work the sound booth and, and be an usher and take the, he can't do everything. And it's not about just doing work in the house of God. But it's something about being in the presence of God. I get it. We can have the presence of God at home. Yes, I understand. But there's something different when two or three are gathered together in his name. The Bible says he's in the midst. He said when two or three touch and agree on anything, he said, I'll do it. But if, if, you, if you live by yourself, uh, 
If you're a bachelor, usually bachelors, when they live by themselves, they don't come to church, even though they have church by themselves, they struggle because they ain't got nobody to touch and agree with. So they try to find somebody to touch. Say what you want to say. I know the truth. I used to be a bachelor. You notice now God told him, go to the potter's house, and there you'll hear from me. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We need a relationship with God outside of these walls, yes. But to maintain that relationship... You can't just be a visitor in the house of God. Yes, have a relationship with God outside of the church. Worship God when you're at home. Praise God when you're at home. Pray to God when you're at home. Read his word when you're at home. But don't be a visitor to his house. David said in, in, in Psalm 23 verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell... And the house of the Lord forever. He said, I'd rather be in the house of God than in my own house. He never said, I'll dwell in my house forever. But he said, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David, 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 there's a man after God's own heart. And David said, he, he, he has this nice house and he's looking at his house. And he's like, wait a minute. Look how beautiful my house is. And God is living inside of a tent. There's something wrong with this picture. It's something wrong when I prioritize my house over the house of God. But we're breeding a generation that says, man, don't give the church all your money and don't do this. Don't. He's the king. And here's what the king said. He says, look, I'm not raising an offering for the building fund yet. He said, I must be first partaker. And he just started taking the stuff. Here, take this and 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 take this. And all of this is going just for the building fund. Now everybody else can get. But we want to raise a generation. Oh, man, the church just wants your money. Listen, folks, listen, listen. Let's get rid of that foolishness. I'll tell you why that's so important. If you keep that mentality, they said, man, I'm not giving nothing to the church. That's cool. Keep your money. But I promise you. I promise you, I guarantee you, I'm going to keep giving, and God is going to bless me more than he blesses you. I stand on it. You cannot outgive God. And if you have this mentality that I'm not going to give God my stuff, he'll stop giving you his stuff. Because, yeah, I understand people are like, oh, I can't believe he said They're watching it online right now, and they're mad, and they can be mad. But the reason why you have a job right now is because God gave it to you. And if you, if, if you keep smelling yourself long enough, God will take it away from you. And then guess what they're going to do? Come right back to the church. Pastor, can you pray for me that I get a job? Get the job, then they want to leave again. That's funny to me. When you need God, you're here. But when you think everything is good, I don't, I don't really need to come to the potter's house. I'm not going to meddle tonight that much. So David said, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, verse 18, he says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Here's what I need you to understand. This is not my church. This is not even pastor's church. This is God's church. And he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We have to understand that this is God's church, and God is going to build this church. Praise God. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See, the problem is if you can't be next to the potter, and you can't come to the potter's house, you won't know the mysteries of God. That's the reason why so many people are reading the Bible so much and they're not getting nothing from it. I talk to some people sometimes and, and we're, I'm teaching them Bible study or we're just having a discussion about the Bible. They're like, man, I never heard that before. I've never seen that before. 
as I'm teaching them Bible study, they're like, wow, that's great revelation. And then they'll start watching our live stream because they're in another state. They're like, man, that's powerful. How do you guys learn so much? Because to us, it's given the mysteries. You know why we get the mysteries? Because we're in the house. The potter can deal with us here and tell us things. And Secondly, secondly, it is important to understand that Jesus is the potter. See, to understand why I need to stay in the potter's house, I must first understand, well, who is the potter? <laughs> because if, if, if it's just coming to the potter's house, do I want to go to the potter's house or do I want to go to the Thompson's house? Well, you need to know who the potter is first, then you'll understand the gravity of being in this house. See, you'll notice now that, that, that as we were reading, when Jeremiah goes down, he goes to the potter to see what the potter is doing. Well, before this takes place, I want you to see something real quick. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. That word formed comes from the Hebrew word yasar. And the reason why this is so important is because that word yasar means through the squeezing into shape to mold into a form, especially as the potter. So that word potter in Jeremiah chapter 18 is the same word formed in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. It's the same word. And you'll notice now that God created the heavens and the earth. God created the birds. God created the beasts of the field. God created the waters. God created the land. But man, he formed. Here's the reason why this is so important. Because God now takes the dust of the ground. See, the dust of the ground is the thing that we discard. The things that we walk on. The thing that we dust off of our shoes. The thing that we think is not important. He takes the dust and he begins to form the dust. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord came saying unto me, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So God told Jeremiah to go to the potter's house so that he can see the formation take place. I need you to learn the process of being molded. See, because it's easy for me to tell you that I'm doing something. But if you can't imagine what it means, you won't grasp the concept. See, a lot of times we talk about, well, I want to be conformed to his image and to his likeness. And we're like, great, that sounds good, preacher. What that mean? I need to understand what that means. How do I get molded into his image? And Jeremiah probably had that same thought. So Jesus told him, go down to the potter's house. And I'm going to show you something. So he sends him down, and, and as he comes down, now notice now that same word, before I formed thee, Yassar, I knew thee. Before I even started the work, I already knew who you were. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art the Yassar. You're the potter, and we are the works of thy hand. So we cannot leave the potter's house because we're still clay. This is important now. Because if you leave the potter's house as clay, you never become a vessel. Notice now the Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Well, how in the world can you walk around with treasure in a vessel that hasn't been molded into a vessel yet? Well, you can't be that vessel to be poured out if you've never been conformed or molded. So if we leave the potter's house, the forming is never complete. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let us let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, 
uh, uh, all, all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, uh, created he him. Male and female created he them. Notice now the final product. The final product is we're going to make man in our image. See, the vision is in the mind of the potter. And the end product is for the vessel to look like the potter. How many here, raise your hand, looks like the potter right now? How many online that are watching looks like the potter right now? Go ahead and like the video if you do. Well, if you don't, you need to stay in the house of God. How many in this house has ever walked on water? Well, stay in the house of God because Jesus walked on water. How many in this house has ever raised the dead? Stay in the house then because Jesus raised the dead. How many has ever died, defeated death in a grave, came back three days later, rolled away his own stone? Huh? Well, why are we trying to leave the house of God? How many in this house are watching online and can say, all power is in my hand? But God said that he formed us after his own image, after his likeness, meaning after his own characteristics. So what God can do, I should be able to do. Well, I can't do it yet, so that means I need to continue to be molded. My third point, I told you I wasn't going to be long, is very, very important. You ready for this? He won't throw you away. See, I love, this is the reason why I love being in the house of God and I love who the potter is because no matter how bad the, 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 the pottery is damaged, the potter won't discard you. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 4, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make. See, I thank God that no matter how bad I look, no, how, how many, no matter how much I've done wrong, no matter who has cut me off because they don't like me, no matter how many people have stabbed me in the back, no matter how many people have taken advantage of me, no matter how many people say I'm worthless, no matter how many people say I'm stupid, no matter how many people say I'm dumb, no matter how many people say I don't want nothing to do with him. The potter hasn't said that. No matter how many people has trampled on me, God hasn't done that to me. No matter how bad people consider me, no matter how many people I've let down and disappoint, God hasn't thrown me away. See, God won't toss you away no matter how many flaws you have. And sometimes we have allowed society and we've allowed people that we love and people that we care about to put this stigma in our mind that you've done this this time and you've done this this time and you've gone too far this time. You're no good. You're worthless. Nobody ever wants you. And we start to believe that foolishness. And the reason why we start to believe it is because our relationship with the potter is severed. So when people start telling us lies about, oh, man, you're, you're no good, we start to believe it. But I thank God. At all the times that I've messed up, at all the times I've disappointed God, God has never said, son, you've disappointed me. God, son, you let me down. You know, he's always told me, I love you. You know, some years ago, there was, um, there was a, a pastor that came, priest in New Life. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I was going through a place in my life I was kind of struggling. I wasn't in sin or anything. I was just struggling. It just fade. David Shatwell came to the church. And he, 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 he called all the all the preachers and the ministers up and he began to pray for them he wanted somebody to, he wanted everybody to pray for each other he started praying for them and he stopped at me and he looked at me and I was going through some stuff because in my mind I'm thinking I'm, I can't get this right I'm not doing nothing egregiously wrong I'm just having thoughts and I'm like why am I having these crazy thoughts and he stopped and he looked at me he says 
something different about you. And God wants to tell me that he loves you with a special love. At that moment, I thought I was in heaven. Because in my mind, I was thinking there's no way God can still love me. No way God still needs me. No way God wants to use me. No way God is even, I understand people say this about me and people say this about me, but, but who cares about that? God doesn't think that about me. And this man of God comes, he says, God loves you with a special love. And I started to cry. This is the reason why it's important to stay in the house of the potter. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You have to understand that God already knows your imperfections. Think about Peter for a moment. Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. And he tells uh, Peter, he says, Peter, Satan, he desires to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you. He didn't, he didn't pray that, that he doesn't fail. He prayed that his faith doesn't fail. He says, Peter, I understand that you're going to deny me. I understand you're going to betray me. I understand you're going to run from me. I understand you're going to leave me. I understand you're going to desert me. But I still love you. I love you to the point that I'm going to entrust you with the keys to the kingdom. And I'm going to be right here waiting on you when you come back home. See, that might not get you excited. But that gets me excited because I understand that as long as I stay on the wheel, all my imperfections, God can begin to work out. I want you to understand something. That it's because of the imperfections why he loves me. Let me say that again. It's because you have flaws, sis, why God loves you so much. Because if you look in the Bible... Satan, he made perfect. Show me how many times God said he loved Satan. Show me your Bible where Jesus died for Satan. Made him perfect, made him beautiful, no flaws. But because of no flaws, pride comes. Where Satan sins before sin was manifest. It's because I'm flawed why God loves me. It's because I'm not perfect why God loves me. It's because I've messed up why God's still working on me. And we need to understand that the reason why God is still working on us is because of the imperfections. It's because we're not perfect. And when you're one of the potters and he understands there's imperfections there, he says, let me take some more time with this one. I understand I got other clay over here, but that clay don't mean that much to me. I got, I got this clay right here that I want to spend time on. I want to spend time with. I want to get my hands on. Let me, let me help you real quick. See, everybody talks about, man, I want the hand of God to be upon me. I want God's hand to be on me. Well, well, the reason why God's hand rests on you so much is because of all the flaws that's in you. So God is just working on the flaws and massaging this here and working on this right here because, up, oh, I got to rub this one out. And here's what takes place. Here's the reason why a lot of times people leave the house of God. It's called friction. It's not, God's not tickling you. You notice that what God does is he begins to crush you. So he can remold you. And sometimes when the crushing takes place, we start to run for the heels. But, but you'll notice now if you've been crushed already, you can't really run as fast as you run and run. And then when you get to a place, you feel worse than you felt before. Because now your leg don't move like it used to move. Your hand don't move like it used to move. Why can't I worship God anymore? Why is it I can't dance in his presence no more? Because you got off the wheel before it was time. That's the reason why a lot of times people leave the house of God. I don't really want that pressure. But God's trying to perfect you. God is molding you because he has in his, in his mind what he wants you to be. So you'll notice now, even though it's flawed, 
his hand stayed on the clay. He didn't get frustrated with the clay like our family does. Like our friends do. Like our coworkers do. Like our neighbors do. Like we do with our children. Praise God. But what he did was he kept his hand on them. Because eventually this fracture right here will be gone. Eventually this, this, this lump right here, this, 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 it'll be gone. Let me help you out real quick. Even if that lump doesn't move, you need to thank God for it. I'll tell you why that's important. Because if you look at pottery, <laughs> the ones that's valuable, they have specific identification marks that, that, that you know that it's made by this person and it's not a duplicate. There's blemishes and fall, flaws that's in there intentionally for you to identify it with who the potter is. Some flaws is in you, God left in you on purpose. Because I need you to be able to identify with your father. Oh, praise God. Psalms 51 verse 16, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not burnt offering. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. David got a hold of this. David understand if I can be broken, I'll attract the potter to me. Because the potter just doesn't want damaged vessels everywhere. That drives him crazy. Because he has in his mind already what the vessel should look like. So if David is broken, the potter's like, wait a minute. I got to fix this broken piece. <laughs> but the problem is sometimes we'll walk around with a mask. And we'll walk around with a facade like everything's okay. And the potter's like, okay, you don't want to help? Want help? Let me move on over here. Do you know the, 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 the one piece of clay that the potter can't deal with? One is dry, callous, can't do nothing with it, can't really, it's not pliable, it's not, it's not moldable. We need to be careful when we come into the house of God when the, when the songs of Zion don't move us. We might, our worship might be dry. Our praise might, our relationship with God might be dehydrated. Told you I wouldn't be long. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. There are people that are battling with different value issues because someone has cast them to the side. But if you cast your cares on him because he cares for you, we've cast our cares on people that really don't care about us. And we wonder why we get hurt so much. Because that person that you cast your cares on can care less about you. Why don't you come to the burden bearer? Why don't you come to the one that actually cares? Because in Psalms 94, verse 14, it says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. God can deal with hopelessness. Because we got to be careful when hopelessness begins to set in we'll start to develop a sense of loneliness. We'll start to feel like we're isolated, we're cut off, nobody really cares about us, nobody's really here for us, nobody really loves us. I understand that's the church, and the church said they love us. I'm by myself. Why, why I need to keep going to church? Church folk just want to be in my business. They just want to gossip about me. They don't really care. Let me, let me, let me get out of here. But we have to be careful because God knows what we're going through. God knows those nights when we think that we're alone. Those nights when nobody else is there. When you're at your home and, 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 and you're by yourself. All that's there is your kids. Kids sleep and you sitting there, you just crying by the side of your bed. God, why am I going through this? God, why am I struggling? God, I keep hearing the scripture, reaping, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, it's a whole new day. I'm looking at the sun. It's morning time. Why am I still weeping? Why am I still depressed? 
Why am I still battling anxiety? Go to Psalms 56, verse 8 in the NLT. I want you to notice what God does. In the New Living Translation, he says, You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. This suffering that you think you're going through is not in vain. Because the potter knows exactly where you are. But I just came to help somebody tonight to let you know I don't care how bad it feels. Stay in the potter's house. I don't care how much it hurts. Stay in the potter's house. While you're in the house, don't just be in the house. But stay on the wheel. What does that look like? Stay at the altar. Stay in prayer. Stay in fasting. Stay in your word. Why? Because, because those flaws, that pressure that you feel God is molding. I don't want you to just be in the house. But you never touch the wheel. Let's all stand all over the building. I want to let somebody know tonight that the suffering that you're going through is not in vain. Let me say that again. The pain, <laughs> the pains that you have been feeling, it is not for no reason. Those hurts, those people that's cut you off, those people that's kicked you to the curb, it's not for no reason. See, as long as you stay on the wheel, God will start to separate some things from you anyway. See, you got to understand that, 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 that when, when we pray and we start talking about, you know, how, how God is, is the fire and, and how he's making us pure gold. Well, with gold, what takes place when you're making pure gold, the more pure you want it to be, the harder the fire has to be. So it begins to turn the heat up. And the reason why it turns the heat up is because the gold begins to melt. And to get it more pure, you have to melt it at a higher temperature. And when you melt it at a higher temperature, what happens is to the surface comes all the impurities that's in the gold that must be skimmed away. So there's people that's in your lives as God is skimming away. Stay on the wheel. That friction that you're feeling... Every time you well up in anger, you want to curse somebody out. That's God molding. I got to get this flaw out of you. What's God doing? I'm trying to build Christian character. Why do I need to build Christian character in you? Because I need you to look like me and stop looking like you. So God is putting you on his wheel. If you stay in this house, if you stay in this wheel, you will look like him. Tonight, as we open up these altars, if there's anybody in the house... It says, God, I want to look more like you. We're going to open up these altars for you. If you need a place to pray, these altars are open. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to live 2022 still being me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. They made a song like that. I'm going to do me. I don't want to do me no more. Because doing me led me down depression. Doing me made me want to commit suicide. There's no happiness in just doing me. Because you know who I, all I had left to, to look at and think about was me. And I had issues. I want to be more like God. Tonight, if you need a place to pray, these altars are open. I want us to pray tonight. God, keep me on the wheel. God, give me strength no matter how much pressure, no matter how much pain, no matter how much the scars, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how much you break me, God, keep me on the wheel. God, give me the strength to stay right here and not to move. And God, as you mold me, let your light shine more in me, more bright. 
when the disciples in, in Acts chapter 4, when, when they came to, to, to the disciples, they were talking to the disciples like, well, whose name did you do this? Or, or by what power, by what name? It says in the name of Jesus that we did this, that this man walks. They looked at them. And they said, now these are unlearned men. In other words, they were dumb. They was uneducated. Kind of sort of like me. But you know what he said? And this is the desire I'm looking for. They gave them the highest compliment, Pastor. They said, man, I could, but we can tell they, they've been with Jesus. I want to be around people. And when they see me, they say, I can tell you've been with Jesus. Tonight, if you need a place to pray, if you want to be around people, they look at you and say, you've been around Jesus. I want you to come and pray tonight in Jesus' name.